Shock BC Unit 4 Day 2. You can do some more polar uh, grass. Talk about some of the shapes that were kind of coming up on uh, the assignment and maybe sort of kind of categorize them. Um, so, first one we'll talk about are circles. And so, circles can just be r equals k, where k is a constant, a number. Um, but that would just be a circle centered about the origin of the constant radius, which you're probably not going to run too often. More commonly, it's going to be some number times sine theta or some number times cosine theta. And uh, b is going to actually equal the diameter of the circle. So <clears throat> just as a quick example, um, here's one. If you were to plug some typical values in, like 0, pi over 2 pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. Uh, we're going 0 to 2 pi. That does matter. I plug 0 in, sine 0, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. So if you just graph those, right, um, we can make the graph a little bigger, probably. Make each two marks equal to one integer. Now, um, so 0 is facing the right with a radius of 0. Pi over 2 is the angle, which is facing up with a radius of 1. Pi is facing to the left with the radius of 0 back here. 3 pi over 2 facing down with a negative radius puts it back up. 2 pi facing the right, 0 radius. What happens is, well, we could go ahead and throw in a couple more angles just to see this. I mean, in the future, you're just going to recognize, oh, that's that shape. You might do a simple table like we've done right here. But we could throw in a couple more values just to kind of confirm what is really happening here. So pi over 6 is 1 half. So that would be like pi over 3, pi over 6. 1 half would be, I guess I could have made my graph even bigger. Eh, let's go back and make it bigger. I'm going to make this worth 1. Okay, so um, so those are our dots. Okay, so if we're at pi over if we're at pi over six, one half would be about two of these marks. Uh, I'd be like right about there. Pi over four would be at root two over two, which is about uh, you know root two. Um, another way to think of it is it's the same thing as one over root two, which is the square root of one half. 0.5, I, I was trying to be tricky here. Here, I'll, I'll keep going. One half is two fourths, which is one fourth plus one fourth, which uh, if you're thinking in terms of like, that's the hypotenuse of a right triangle, it means we go over half, up one half, or it's uh, one half on one half. So let's see, that'd be like, be like right here. By the way, 45 degree angle would be like that. Uh, pi over 3 would be root 3 over 2, which, you know, we could just estimate. Square root of 3 is like 1.7 over 2 is like 0 0.85. So it'd be like this. So what's happening here is the radius is going like this. And we're getting these dots along this circle, and then they're going to keep going over here like this. You get a perfect circle. Okay, so um, it starts and ends right there, and uh, the direction it's going is this direction, and uh, there you go, it's a circle. Now we could get. We could, we could algebraically show that it is this specific circle by using these relationships between polar and rectangular coordinates that we talked about yesterday, x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta, and uh, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So these are pretty simple uh, things that we derive from like a little right triangle. Now, in this case here, um, r equals sine theta. Right, so then r times r, you could think of as r times sine theta. I could replace one of the r's with sine theta, 
which means that r squared could be r, r sine is y, right? r squared equals r times r equals r times sine theta equals y. So then we could replace the r squared right here with y. Because we know this, this relationship is true between the rectangular and polar coordinates. And then we would we did this in the notes yesterday. Uh, we can move everything one side and then we complete the square. It would be a negative one half squared, it should be a positive one fourth, x plus y minus one half squared equals one fourth. And that's a Cartesian equation. And it, it, this is a circle centered at zero comma one half with a radius equal to one half. And if you look at the graph we drew, it totally matches up. So anyways, we're not gonna do that with all these, but circles are something that we know how to write a Cartesian equation for, mostly shapes so we can't, you just can't even do it. Um, or we can't get something nice that we're familiar with. So uh, these shapes right here, anytime you have a number being added to it, um, and it can be sine or it can be cosine, just like with circles, it can be cosine. So if it's if it involves sine, like the last problem, it's going to be vertical in nature. If it involves cosine, it's going to be horizontal. And if a over b equals 1, the coefficient here and the coefficient here, or in other words, if a equals b, then you're going to get these heart-looking shapes, which we call cardioids. And cardioids belong to a family of shapes called lemosons. And we're going to see other lemosons, and these, I guess, could be thought of as a lemoson without an inner loop, which doesn't make sense to you right now, but it will. Let me get to the next shape. We do a quick table, which I'd recommend doing. Cosine 0 is 1, so 2, 1, 0, 1, 2. Um, make this worth every two marks equals 1. And so 0, 2 would be here, angle of 0. Angle pi over 2 is up with the radius of 1. Pi is the radius is, is angle over here, the radius is 0. 3 pi over 2 is, is this angle all the way down here with the positive radius of 1, puts it down there, and then we're back to 2. So this is what these shapes look like. So we did some of these. We did one of these in the lesson yesterday. We did a few of these on the homework. They're very curvy. Okay. And, you know, I guess the people, you know, Originally, people thought they looked kind of like a heart, like a human heart. So it starts and ends here. Now, these require 0 to 2 pi. If you did 0 to pi, you'd only get the top half. So you'd only get part of it. If you did 0 to 4 pi, you get the same look and shape. It's just a second. It'd grab itself on top of itself a second time. So that's cosine, which is left to right. This one has sine, but it's negative, so that's going to have a little effect on it. I wouldn't try and memorize, well, what does the negative do? I'd just be like, well, this is a cardioid because the, the numbers match, right? It's going to be up and down because it involves sine, which is true for all these shapes. So that should be an easier thing to remember. Plug some numbers in. 1, 0, 1, uh, 2, 1. Right? Sine of 3 power 2 is negative 1. You subtract the negative. It becomes addition. So, 0, 1, angle 0, facing the right. Pi 2 is facing up with the radius of 0. Pi is facing left with the radius of 1. 3 pi 2 is facing down with the radius of 2. And then you're back here. And so this is a cardioid. It's very round. It needs to go out past those x and y intercepts. Very curvy, very smooth curve, except for here you get that sharp cusp. So it started and ended here. So you might, depending on the way the equation is written, start and end at different places. And the direction kind of goes like this. Um, and it is vertical. Like I said, all the ones involve sine. 
There are some other ones. We're not going to see these very often, but uh, dimpled limason is where the A over B value is between 1 and 2. And you kind of get a shape like this. So it's almost like it's going to be a cardioid, but not, doesn't quite get that cusp. Convex limason, we saw one of these on homework. If A over B is over 2, that would mean... Uh, the A value is that first coefficient. If it's more than double that number, then you're going to get a convex limousin, which looks kind of like a circle that's been kind of flattened. Anyways, those are other limousins that don't have inner loops, but there are limousins that have inner loops. What does that even mean? Okay, well, let me figure it out right now. So it's the same basic, uh, you know, relationship that we've been using for the last example some number plus or minus some number sine theta or cosine theta and here where a over b is less than one or another way to say that that a is less than b so if that first number is less than the number in front of the sine or cosine it's going to have this effect every time so let's first just plug some points in uh, and here's one of those cases, this number is smaller than that number, so it should give us what we're saying that this group of shapes is going to look like. Plug 0 in, you get 1. Pi over 2 would be 3. Pi would be 1. 3 pi over 2 would give you negative 1. And then we'd be back at 1. So we could graph those real quick. Um, I mean, let's see. I could probably make this graph a little bigger. So 0, 1 is here, pi over 2, 3 is up here, uh, pi 1 is here, 3 pi over 2, negative 1. So 3 pi over 2 is facing down here, but negative 1 flips it up. So it's not going to be here, it's going to be here, and then 2 pi over back here. So this is that, all these, these limousons and cardios and stuff, they all have like a point out here, and these 2x or y intercepts in this point. If it's here, that's a cardioid. If it's out here, it's like a convex limousine or something, dimpled limousine. Now it's like inside the shape. So let's see if we can figure out what's going on. Let's figure out when when did it go inside the shape? It went inside the shape right here at 3 pi over 2. So right before that, it was right here, and then it somehow went in here. So let's maybe pick another point. Uh, I'm going to pick 7 pi over 6, which is really close to 8 pi over 6, which would be, or, yeah. Well, actually, no. Now, here's the deal. A lot of these shapes go through the origin. Some of them don't. The cardioids do. That's where that is. And if this is inside, what we could do is we could try and figure out, like, when, when does it go through the origin? And more specifically, we call that the pull. In, in parametrics, we call that the pull. And we can actually figure out when that happens for any kind of shape. And a lot of times interesting things happen there, or we're asked to find things that happen there. And the, the, it's easy. You just set the radius equals zero. The, only, the way it's going to be there is if somehow the radius is zero. And so you set the r equal to zero in your equation. And then you can find the angles that cause it to go through the origin. So you negative one half, reference angle, when the sine equal one half, pi over 6, what quadrants is it negative? 3 and 4. So we'd get theta equals quadrant 3 uh, would be pi plus pi over 6, that'd be 7 pi over 6. And then uh, 2 pi minus pi over 6, that'd be 11 pi over 6. So these are the angles that that's happening. So if you plug those in and you were to test it, you should get 0 and 0. So what's happening is it is going through this point. We know twice, OK? And this is how the shape looks. It starts here, right? It's going to start and end here. And it's going, it, it kind of looks, you know, kind of like a cardioid. It's, it's very round. And it goes through that point and comes back through here, right? Very, this looks just like all these other shapes. And then it comes in here, and then it does go through the pole. And then it hits this. And then it goes like this, and it comes back through the pole. And it looks like that. It's kind of crazy. So that's it. Lean song with the inner loop. It's always going to happen when this first number is smaller than the coefficient from the sine of the cosine. Um, and again, sine is always going to be vertical in nature, and cosine is going to be horizontal. So that's some good things to anticipate.
So here, if we were to do the same thing, um, plug zero in here, um, that's gonna be negative four, pi over two is gonna be four, pi is gonna be 12, three pi over two is gonna be four, two pi is gonna be negative four. So this is a big graph. Um, it's gonna be really big to the left. So I don't know if we wanna make each of these points worth like two each. Okay, so um, zero negative four is actually right here. Pi over two four is here. Um, pi facing left, positive raised to 12 ends up oh, way over there. And three pi over two is gonna be down. So this is what the graph looks like. You can imagine it's probably gonna go through the pole and that's that, t that's that extreme part of that inner loop. So we could say, when is it at the pole? And we can set r equal to zero, and we can solve for it. So cosine theta equals pos one half, alpha equals pi over three, quadrants one and four, uh, theta equals pi over three and five pi over three. So we can usually do some quick calculations to figure out when that happens. Now pi over three is between zero and pi over two, it's the first quadrant. And this is the fourth quadrant here, and that's uh, five pi over three is right here. So we could add a couple extra points. Um, so it starts here, and no, it actually starts here, and it's probably gonna go like this, that's out in a loop. You can tell this is that part that's inside the shape. Usually it'd be over here, right there. It's gonna look like that. So something like that. So it actually starts and ends there. And then it's going like this. That's the direction of it. <clears throat> so kind of fun. All right. Now for the last shape that we've sort of avoided so far, last two problems on the homework. The last lesson were involving the shape. I told you guys to skip those. These are kind of crazy, so I'm going to try and, you know, sort of develop why the shape is the way it is, and then we'll kind of look at maybe some shortcuts as to how to how to graph it. So this is actually one of the problems from yesterday's homework, so I guess you could add this to it. Now, these are called rose curves or rose petals or flowers or something like that, because so, I mean, they kind of look like they kind of look like flowers. I don't know if they look like roses, really, but now. Um, what they have is they have some number and then they have some number on the inside. That's gonna be the thing that kind of sets them apart is they kind of look like the equation of a circle on the front. We said there could be a number in front and that's the diameter. And that's gonna be the diameter of these two, but there's a extra number on the inside and n can't equal one. If n equals one, uh, it, it's, it's like a one petaled rows, which gives you a single circle. So we could think of circles as actually belonging to this family. Now, uh, let, let's figure out how this works. So one of the things that's interesting, like I said, we were saying is like, when are these shapes at the pole? So we could just set R equal to zero and figure it out. So, well, three theta sine equals zero, zero plus pi k, theta equals zero plus pi over three k. So theta equals zero, pi over three, two pi over three, pi, so forth, right? Um, now, let's see. Now, what's happening between the values when it's at the pole? The pole's pretty boring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph the radius instead of making a chart, sort of like instead of a chart. And I probably usually won't use charts on these ones. Um, I, I just don't think it'd be very efficient. Instead of doing a chart, I'm going to actually graph the radius values uh, versus theta as its own graph. So this isn't usually what we get 
you know. So, um, you know, if you plug, now zero is going to happen at, let's go and say, okay, this is pi over three, two pi over three, pi, four pi over three, five pi over three, two pi. Okay. So when you're here, when you're at these points, the radius is zero, right? That's when you're at the pole. That's how we just found it. So what's happening between those? So at, uh, say, pi over 6, exactly halfway between these, you plug that in, hit sine of uh, pi over 2 is 1. So the radius is up here at 1. And then at, uh, you know, this is 2 pi, this is 3 pi over 6, which is pi over 2, would be 3 pi over 2, would be negative 1. Negative 1 is down here. And you plug in, uh, what is this, uh, six, 7 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6. Plug that in, you get a 7 pi over 2, which is the same thing as uh, 3 pi over 2. Um, okay, so if we do 7 pi over 6, um, no, no, that would be 5 pi over 6. And so then that'd be a 5 pi over 2, um, 4 pi over 2, that is the same as pi over 2, so you're, you're going to be up here at 1. Anyways, what's happening here is that the radius is bouncing back and forth between a uh, positive one and a negative one. Okay? So, it's kind of, a, it creates its own little trig graph, which I guess makes sense that R is a trig function. But um, I'm going to use that kind of to help us just graph this shape here. Okay? Now what's going to happen is the radius only extends at most to one and negative one. So you know that it's going to go, it's going to hit all the values between zero and that amplitude value. So we could expect it to sort of be circular in nature. Um, I'm going to make, I guess, I'm going to go ahead and sketch, roughly sketch a circle. Not that the shape's going to look like a circle, but it is going to have, it's going to be sort of restricted to that. So I would, I would, this would be the first thing I do when I graph these is I just roughly sketch a circle with that size. And then um, if we were to, you know, start plugging these values in, like, you know, it's going to go through the origin, but uh, at pi over six, so this is pi over three, right? And then this would be like pi over six. Or something like that, and this would be like a two pi over three. Yeah. So at pi over six, it has a value of one. It's out here at that, out at that extreme value, and then pi over three, it's back here, and it hits all the values in between. So it kind of looks like this. It looks like that, and it's very sharp right there at the origin, and so then at uh pi over, so pi over three it's back here at pi over two which would be up here it has a negative radius that's so down here and then at two pi over three it's back here so what happens is you it goes like this and then at uh five pi over six we're right here and it has a positive radius of one so it kind of goes like this and then what happens after that is it start it just repeats itself and it ends up being graphed right on top of it. But this is what the graph looks like. So it's starting and ending at the origin, and then it's kind of going this way. Now, what I want you guys to do in your homework in your next test is I want you to number the pedals. So that's the first pedal that I got graphed. This is the second pedal, and this is the third pedal. So one pedal goes nicely, if you tell, directly into the next one, totally smooth. And that always happens. Um, and you can figure out where the tips of the pedals happen, and that's actually probably the better thing to do in the future when I sketch these, and I'll show you in the next example. How do you figure out where the tips of the pedals are? Well, you set your, you set your, your equation, uh, you set your radius equal to 1, or whatever the radius is. Because, by the way, this A value right here, that's going to equal the radius of your flowers. Okay, so if you set it equal to that extreme radius, you can figure out where the tips of all the petals are. And then I feel like that's going to be easier graph, where it goes through the pole, goes through the pole tons of times. So then you say, okay, well, three theta equals one to sine equal one. 
uh, pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. Actually, plus or minus the petal. Plus or minus. So it's going to be pi over 2 plus pi k. Because the negative 1 radius, that's at the tip also. So theta equals pi over 6 plus pi over 3k. And then theta equals pi over 6. And then they're adding and then 2 pi over 6 and pi over 2. And then uh, let's see. 4, four pi over 6 would be 2 pi over 3. All right, did I mess up? Let's see. Hold on. Uh, this would be 3, 4 pi over 6, so 2 pi over 3. Um, no, something's wrong with that. Let's see. 3, 4 pi over 3, 4 pi over 6. I don't know. Some, something's wrong with my math because I got it right here. The things I want you to, now I'll show you in a second. I want you to, I this is bugging me. Um, to, oh, okay. I was adding pi over 6. So this is, uh, this is 3 pi over 6 plus another 2 pi over 6 would be 5 pi over 6. There you go. I want you to sketch these graphs. I want you to show me the beginning and ending, start and end of the graph. Tell me where it's at. Uh, I want you to show me the direction of the graph. I want you to label, state the radius. Okay. The direction is just going to be on the graph. I want I want to know how many petals there are. In this case, there's three petals, which you'll notice matches that number right there, but it's not that predictable. I also want you to describe, well, if we did 0 to 2 pi, which we did, um, we ended up repeating the pattern. So we went twice through the pattern. Okay, or you could describe that as we duplicated the pattern or we repeated the pattern. Now there's this thing about X and Y uh, symmetry that I'm mentioning. I don't I don't need that right now. But you'll know if you look at the graph, you could say, oh yeah, that's a it has axis, uh, symmetry across the y axis. So we would call that a an even function because there's y axis symmetry. But okay, now on tonight's homework. This is actually one of the problems. I'm going to go and show you again how I would do this quicker, though. Now, anytime there's a number in here other than one, that's going to be a rose curve. Boom, rose curve. If there's just a number in front, this right here is the radius of the rose curve. Now, if it has two, you might be like, oh, it's going to have two petals. Mm, let's see. Let's figure out what the tips of the petals are. Okay. Um, so we're going to set equal plus or minus one. The amplitude and then we say okay well sine equals plus or minus one at pi over two plus pi k to to consider the plus and the minus so it's going to be theta equals pi over four plus pi over two k and so that's going to be at uh, pi over four it's three pi over four five pi over four and 7 pi over 4. Now I'm going to kind of do what I was doing up here, thinking about up here, but I'm just going to kind of do it more in my head. So uh, you know that at these points, these flower tips, it's going to alternate positive amplitude, negative amplitude, positive amplitude, negative amplitude. So what I would first do is sketch the angles associated with all these tips. Okay? And then what you probably should also do is sketch the angles exactly halfway between them, which this time is easy. It's the x and y axis. Because the angle is exactly halfway in between the tips is when it's going to go through the pole. OK? So if I plug pi over 4 in up here, um, that's going to be sine of pi over 2, which is positive 1. Now, so the next thing I would do is I would sketch the circle that this flower is going to fit inside of. And that's going to be equal a uh, circle with the same radius. So if there was a number in front of here other than one, then you make your radius bigger to match that. Okay, so I do that next. Do the circle first, then the angles. Do the angles, then do the circle. Now let's try and nail down where the tips of the petals are. So pi over four is right here. 
And that's that first tip for sine starts at positive one, right? So that's that first one. Now, if you plug zero in, you're right here. So, so this first petal looks like this. And when it comes in to the pole, it's going to be like, it's like almost like a, a tangent line with the angle that's halfway between it. So it comes in very sharp and like it's coming in to where it's just barely hitting that line. That's the first pedal. I want you to number the pedals. Now three pi over four. So this is pi over four. Uh, this is two pi over four. This is three pi over four. This is uh, four, five pi over four, six, seven pi over four. Now when you get to three pi over four, it's going to be the negative one value. So this is the second pedals down here. It's not up here. And remember, it goes smoothly in from one into the next, which would be right here. Smoothly in to the next one. Smoothly in to the next one. And smoothly back into the beginning. So this is one, two, three, fourth pedal. And the direction is like this. So these are all things I want. I want to see where does it start end. Right? I want the shape, of course, sketched. I want the petals numbered. I want the direction. Okay? So we sketched it. It begins and ends at 0, 0. Uh, we showed the direction on the graph. Right? Uh, the radius of the petals was 1. How many petals? There's actually four petals. Okay? So let's talk about that real quick. How many times do the pattern? once through the pattern instead of twice like last time and you don't need to worry about symmetry so we're not i'm not going to talk about the symmetry stuff okay anyways back to this if there's an even number if 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 the n value is even then you're going to get that many petals once through zero to two pi. I'll explain why. Uh, if n is odd, no, if, if n is even, it was two, you're going to get that many, you're going to get that many petals doubled, double those number of petals. If n is odd, you're going to get n petals. So this is going to be double n, this is going to be n petals, but it only, you only need zero to pi to graph it. So what happens is the odd numbered petal flowers the ones that have an odd number they actually have double the petals also it's that the second set of petals end up right on top of the first set of petals but when it's an even number the second set of petals end up in between the other petals and so you get the appearance of twice as many so anyways uh today's tonight's homework you can you can try the worksheet. You can try the, the two problems from yesterday's homework. We actually kind of sketch what the answer looks like in one of those examples. Um, so and so on tonight's homework. You can, um, there's sort of an opportunity. So in the notes it says. Let's see. Sorry about this. Let me finish this up. It says 24 and 25 are extra credit. So this is 24. I guess this should be 25. Uh, anyways, then there's this other extra credit thing where you can create like a, a cool picture involving uh, polar functions. So I've had people make, you know, I, I don't have any examples right now to show you in the video, but I'll try and maybe I'll show another video. Uh, made uh, just different shapes or animals or whatever cool cool artwork involving m multiple you know some people drew like something that looked like a flower uh, some people made the sort of these these shapes fit into like a sand dollar or something like that and put them on a beach and you know, there you go